friends, thanks for joining me today. We will be making a gluten-free vanilla cookie. And we're going to start by putting two cups of cassava flour in our bowl. And if you're not familiar with the cassava flour, it is definitely different than the tapioca flour, though they both come from the same plant. Cassava flour uses the entire uh, root of the plant. Um, it is ground up and dried and um, turned into the flour, whereas the tapioca starch, they grind it and um, use, uh, they, they um, put it in water and filter the water so that you just have the water, they let it evaporate, and you're left with a white uh, powdery starch. So that is the difference between the two. So um, you will be getting more fiber out of the cassava flour. So it's better for your digestive system. It'll help keep your um, blood sugar levels low, uh, which are some great benefits. So two cups of cassava flour. To this, we are going to be using a third of a cup of monk fruit. You know, my preferred sweetener, right? Uh, you could substitute with honey. Um, I do use less monk fruit than you probably would want to use if you were swapping out for honey or even coconut sugar. Uh, I find that it's very sweet and I can use a little bit less, but if you were using honey, for instance, you may want to up it to a half a cup or maybe even two thirds of a cup um, and the same with uh, coconut sugar. And let's see, we will then add a half a teaspoon of salt, three quarters teaspoon of baking soda, and what do I have here? Two tablespoons of plain gelatin. It's just like you would use for jello, but it's uh, not flavored, it's just plain. And we are going to add one cup of ghee. You could substitute uh, coconut oil if you can't use ghee. I have not tried using a liquid oil like avocado oil for this recipe, though you um, are welcome to try. I, I think if you did that, you would have to add maybe a half of an egg or so to the recipe because it would probably be a, a little bit too uh, liquidy for you. Um, also to this, I am adding a quarter of a cup of coconut milk. And I'm adding this because I'm using monk fruit. Monk fruit does not have the moisture in it that you get from uh, coconut sugar or if you're using regular granulated sugar. So I need to add a little liquid to my uh, recipes to compensate for that. But if you're using honey or something other than monk fruit, you could eliminate the coconut milk. And I am adding one tablespoon of vanilla extract. My vanilla extract is pure and it's also organic. So if you aren't familiar with me, I am pretty much of a food snob, yes. So we are going to mix all of these ingredients together. All right, that seems to be mixed up well. You can see it's pretty um, held together, pretty moldable, um, kind of like dough. So we're going to take a lined baking sheet. I've lined my baking sheet with parchment paper. And you just want to take a spoonful of dough, I'm just using the teaspoon, and we're going to roll it between our hands and we'll put it down and flatten it out like so. And I am going to pause the video, I'll continue to fill my cookie tray and I'll give you a look. And we don't need to um, separate them much, they're not really going to spread while they're baking. All right, I'll catch you in a minute. The cookies are all on our 
cookie sheet now. We're ready to put them in the oven. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees. I am using a stone pan, so I probably will need to bake my cookies about 12 to 13 minutes where you're probably, if you're not using stone and you're using a metal bake pan, we'll probably do more like 10 minutes. Um, we want to bake them till they're lightly browned around the edges. Okay? My timer just went off, so let us check the cookies and see how they look, shall we? Oh, lovely. Now they're very delicate. We don't want to uh, touch them, but they do seem to be um, plenty done. Um, they're not, I wouldn't say that they're firm to the touch because they're very soft, but they do look slightly golden. So we're going to take these off of the cookie sheet and let them cool. And what we want to do is just take the parchment paper and kind of slide it off. So I'm just going to slide it right up here onto my cooling rack and I'll just put the legs up. and let these cool while I bake the rest of the cookies. Um, and one thing I did forget to mention was you could certainly swap out butter for the ghee uh, if you're looking to cut out dairy, go with the coconut oil completely. Um, so we'll let these cool. I'll bake the rest of the cookies and then we'll give a taste. So the cookies seem to be cool enough. Shall we try one and see how yummy they are? Mm -mm. Quite lovely. They have a little bit of a shortbread kind of texture about them and you can taste the butteriness from the ghee. Quite a very nice delicate cookie. Would go great with a cup of tea. I'll catch you next time in another one of our gluten-free videos. Have a great day.